Hi, I'm Jeremy Crosby. And I'm Nick Boucher. We're the hosts for the program that's all about your city, Talking Pittsburgh. Every day, we pull together the news, events, and information you need to stay on top of what's happening in the city of Pittsburgh. Find Talking Pittsburgh on cable TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and our live stream on the web. Plus, you can view all our headlines and stories on Facebook, YouTube, and our video on demand service. This is your city. Keep up with Talking Fitchburg and the issues that affect you and your neighbors. Want to know what's happening in your city? Get Notify Me messages from the City of Fitchburg. Visit FitchburgWI.gov on your computer or mobile device and select the big Notify Me button on the left. Enter your email and or phone number, whichever is best for you to get notifications. Scroll down the list and select all the topics you're interested in to receive email or text messages about. You'll be notified every time one of your topics is updated. Sign up for Notify Me. One more way to keep up with your Fitchburg government. Being 531, we'll call to order this meeting of the Fitchburg Board of Public Works for October 21st, 2024, held in the Francis Huntley Council Chambers. We have our entire uh, um, committee tonight, Alder Jetzer, Kim, myself, Dave, and Don, so we have all five. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Public appearances for non-agenda items, well, we do not have any at this time. So that moves us to agenda item three, alpha approval of September 16th, 2024 meeting minutes. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Move I'll by second. second it. Moved by Wilborn. Any no, discussion? Yeah, I says, oh. second. It was moved by, I think it was moved by Don and yeah. second by Dave. Yeah. I'm sorry. Any questions, corrections, changes? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All in favor of the approval of the September 16th minutes. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Next, we have six, three Bravo. Approval of October 7th, 2024 meeting minutes. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll move to approve. Move by Kim. Move by Kim. Second by Alder Jets. Or any questions, corrections, additions? Seeing none. All in favor of approval of the minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. Next, uh, we have the report of our Director of Public Works, Mr. Tim Volker, PE. Thank you. I'll start with a couple project updates. Our 2024 street resurfacing project, the milling and uh, pavement are complete on Seminole Highway, Nesbitt Road, and Fitchrona Road. Uh, the contractor completed that last week. The, their subcontractor is going to complete the striping for all three roads. Uh, they'll start that work this week. And then the contractor is also working on some punch list items for that project. Our 2024 street maintenance project, that's our crack filling and chip seal project. Uh, their contractor is still working on some punch list items for that. And then our 2025 ARPA street resurfacing project, it was advertised on Friday, October 19th. Uh, 2024. Uh, bids for that project will open on Friday, November 1st, 2024. And we'd look to have the work commence on that street resurfacing project in spring of 2025. So since that's an ARPA project, the ARPA funding needs to be under contract by the end of 2024, hence why we're putting it out to bid now. And then the work can start um, come spring 2025. Our 2024 sidewalk replacement project on the agenda tonight, we have the public hearing for that project and then also the contract award uh, to start the work we're anticipating, uh, if it gets approved at tomorrow's co council meeting, start next week and then anticipate two to three w weeks to remove and replace the sidewalk. Our Fitchrona Road Goose Lake stormwater project uh, looking to complete the wetland delineation by the end of this month for that project and uh, also start the survey this month. 
And then our well 12, which is our st in Stoner Prairie at the corner of Velt Drive and uh, Wayfair Street. Uh, the contractor is looking to start drilling of that well this week. And then Tower D, that's our new water tower. Uh, bids are due at the end of this month on October 30th. With that, does anyone have any questions? Board? Uh, yeah. Just Tower D, where is that going at? Again. Uh, that's going off uh, Highway 14 on the northeast corner there. The, the city owns a little parcel of land there. Will that be predominantly uh, from our well, or is that we'll, we'll get that water from Madison? From our well. Okay. Um, any other questions? Edwin, um, you know, so we're getting started at the Goose Lake, you know, wetland delineation. What's going on? Do you know what's going on there? You know, right along Highway 18151, there's a hell of a lot of work, big pipe coming out of the ground. I believe MMSD is doing MMSD. some improvements to their system. Okay. It's a big project. They've been going on that for a long time. Okay. Thank you, Tim. All right. Anything else? Then we'll move on. Uh, next, we have review of utility P card and check purchases. So I'll get up to the board here if you have questions on this. Give me a minute to page down. I did. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, question <clears throat> on the Greenway Cross area. Now, is that the final billing, those uh, three, one for 74,452, another for 72,074,64361, and a retainage is being released, so I'm assuming that's all done and you get satisfied with it or if you're releasing the retainage fee, right? Yeah, I believe there's they're still withholding $2,000 worth of retainage on that project. So out of 320000 the city's paid out 318000 So you're still holding for that one. project. Correct. All right. But you're pretty well satisfied of what was done? I'm yes. Assuming. Okay. Thanks. Um, Tim, we had a, uh, a water break. Um, Harvest Ridge, it's, it's, on, it's off of McKee. Coming towards City Hall after you, it's the first street after you cross Seminole. Woods Edge? Woods Edge. Okay. And we had a water break there, and it, uh, you know, the, the space where they got in repaired, that's slated to be repaired, but I think you have to, I think we have to repair a bigger area. It's real bumpy. and Yeah, know. and so the, the utility right now, we're looking to have Payne and Dolan give us a price to repair it. It's just too large for us to do okay. in-house. So we, we will be repairing more more of that area. That's Good. I'll let the residents know. I figured you were on top of that. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? All right. Let me page back up to the agenda. Um, so what I would like to do is I would uh, entertain a motion to amend the agenda to move to uh, um, to item seven seven Bravo, and then um, then come back when it's time for the public hearing. I'll move that we continue on with the agenda and head back to six A at six p.m. Okay. I'll second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the amend agenda is amended. Okay, so next we have um, our agenda item 7, Bravo, Resolution R-170-24, um, authorizing purchase of 2025 street tractor. Uh, we have a motion to approve. I'll move approval. Moved by Alder Jetzer. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Don. Um, Tim, you want to give us the background on this um, age of exactly maybe for people wa watching? What is a streets tractor? Or is it just a tractor used by the streets department? So the, this streets tractor is specifically used for uh, mowing ditch lines in our rural roads, um, mowing stormwater ponds, and uh, sweeping debris from the road. We'll also use it to roll shoulders and... Um, 
in springtime, we'll do some shoulder reclamation work that's been washed out uh, from winter. But specifically regarding this tractor, the Public Works has budgeted $77,150 for the replacement of this 2012 Farmall uh, 75C and MB broom and mower attachment. Uh, Mid-state equipment has supplied Fitchburg a quote for a John Deere 5075M tractor and MB broom attachment using the Sourcewell cooperative bidding process for a cost of $95,659.57. Mid-state equipment has offered Fitchburg $26,500 for the trade of the 2012 Farmall 75C and 2012 MB broom attachment. We originally purchased uh, both the broom and tractor back in 2012 for $37,000. By using the source well contract, uh, we would save $24,371.92 from the suggested list price of the tractor and $1,150 from the suggested list price of the broom. So we're looking for approval to purchase the John Deere and MB Broom uh, from the Deer and Company through Mid-State Equipment for the cost of $95,659.57. And then authorization to trade in the 2012 Farmall 75C and Broom attachment in the amount of $26,500. So with trade-in, the total cost to the city would be $69,159.57. Thank you, Tim. Questions? Bill? So this is, we're not going to look at the possibility of auctioning the existing tractor? I spoke to Mark today. We could auction it. We could auction it at the reserve or with a reserve of $26,500. Um, if it goes higher than that, we, we could unload it at auction. If it doesn't meet the reserve, just trade it in. Um, so that's something that we can definitely look into and, and do see if we can get some extra money on top of that 26500 Do we have access to the state auction system? You know, the, the yeah, and Mark kind of, you know, before we decide whether to trade it in or put it on there, he kind of looks for similar um, equipment on there, and he felt 26500 was a, a reasonable price for the two attachments. That's kind of why we thought we would just trade it in but we you know we can take a little extra time and see if we can get a couple extra thousand dollars with through the auction system you know we originally purchased it for 37,000 both the the broom and the tractor um, <laughs> over 12 years ago and we're still getting 26,000 so that's why we thought it was a, a, a pretty good deal but don't they charge you a fee at the auction that I don't know. I'd have to check with Mark to, to see if the state auction, if they charge a fee. Well, I've been at them, and when I'm bidding, I know they're going to charge me a fee if I win the bid. Right. So. But I, as far as the, the person putting the equipment, I'm not sure if they, they charge for that through, this, through the state auction the city utilizes. Um, mentioned the broom. What, what about the mower that's... A so the mower we would not purchase through Mid-State right now, and, and the reason for that is Mark likes to, or the streets division likes to use the brand Land Pride, and Mid-State can't provide us with that. So we would look to purchase it separately, um, you know, once we get the, the new tractor. Um, kind of the Land Pride mower would be purchased separately for under $5,000. Um, does the land pride, I assume we can just run off the PTO. We don't need special retrofit for it to. No, no special retrofit. It, it could utilize the existing attachments. Okay. Any, any other questions? Seems like the trading value is a fair price from all of that time, so it might not be worth the effort of going through the auction for getting the minimal amount of staff time and the rest of that rather than just doing it. But I guess that's for you guys to decide what's the most efficient. <clears throat> what's your what's your estimated, you know, what are you estimating for life, life of a 
This is a new tractor, I take it, or is this a used? Yeah, th this would be a brand new tractor okay. that we would purchase. The The existing one lasted 12 years. We have about 2,300 hours on it. Okay. So we, we would expect it to last at, at least that, if not a, a little longer. You know, what, one of the reasons we're, we're looking to get rid of it is the that specific model, the 2012 75C farm wall. Uh, we, we have two of them, and the other one that we have, the clutch fork went last year on it. It was $14,000 to repair. Mm -hmm. That's kind of an I issue when Mark spoke with the, the mechanic that they, they see that a lot. So our thinking was keep the one we repaired get rid of the one that is going to need that repair, and so... You sold me. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, are, are the implements interchangeable for the type of vehicle? It sounds like the mower is, but the, the broom is not? So the, the broom, we would just get a, a new broom. It's the, the existing one's kind of seen its use. Right, it's but useful. are the implements interchangeable? Yes, so and then... When with, your clutch goes on the other one... And you have to get another one. We can just use that broom. Yes. Okay. And then the, with the the newer tractor, we're going to have a, a front three point hitch, which the the existing 2012 doesn't have, which would allow us to purchase a a snow plow to potentially use this in winter. So we could use utilize it year round with the all season tires that the John Deere comes with. Um, we could utilize that to kind of help with cul-de-sacs, with plowing snow versus uh, having the snow plow do it, which is a lot easier with mobility and movement within a cul-de-sac. I believe I saw in here that it was a, the price was guaranteed for 30 days and I believe we're past that. Has that been discussed with them and they're fine with that? Yes. And then just a general question on our equipment, too. We're operating this in the roadways or next to the roadways. Do we put extra lighting on them? Yes. I believe Mark does add lighting to it a after purchasing it to make sure it's street safe and, and legal. Okay. Do we just strip it off the old one and put it on, or we just buy brand new uh, I believe we buy, buy brand new. Okay. Does the uh, price include delivery, or do we do we uh, take a trail over and pick it up? Uh, I don't think Mid States is very far from us, but I don't know exactly where it is. Yeah, I believe Mid States close to us. Let me see. Located in Janesville. Okay. All right, so I have to be delivered. Mark can't drive it down the interstate to get here. <laughs> no. All right. Anything else? Okay. All in favor of resolution R-170-24, approving purchase of the 2025 Streets Tractor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next, we have resolution R-183-24, amending the 2024 TID 13 budget for the Syene Road Project. <laughs> Do we have a motion to approve? I so move we approve resolution R-183-24. We have a second. Second. Second by Don. I'm going to let you wade through this one for me. I, 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 would, I would butcher it here. I'm sorry. So the Syene Road project was authorized by council with a portion of the roadway funded through the Capital Projects Fund and a portion of the roadway funded through TID number 13. Uh, the city engineer has determined that a larger portion of the roadway costs can be allocated to TID number 13. The overall TID 13 project plan has sufficient capacity to absorb this additional cost. So we're looking to amend the 2024 TID number 13 budget to increase the Syene Road project uh, by $65,000. So really what we're looking to do is to, instead of having the capital projects fund fund $65,000 worth of improvements that the TID's going to cover that cost um, in lieu of the capital projects fund. Okay. That was my question. I didn't know if we were increasing it by 65 and using Yeah, the, there's no increase, just a reallocation of, 
uh, which funding would be paying for the improvement. Um, what was the determination? You know, how did you come to this conclusion? That so it, it was TID eligible was the determination and kind of the, the cost was $34,000 worth of actual improvements and then also the engineering inspection services we could charge to the TID. Okay. So kind of when we looked at the final numbers, um, there were some additional improvements and the inspection services uh, to cover those or o oversight of those improvements were able to be covered by the TID. Okay. Sounds good. Are we, uh, we contracting the inspections or are we doing that ourselves on this project? May, on this project, it was mainly contracted. We provided a, a little oversight and management from the office, uh, but most of it was contracted. Okay. And same with phase two and three. Right. Thank you. Questions? Bill? Yeah, I took a look at the map. It looks like about a quarter mile or so of Sign Road was within the TID. I'm just wondering how much um, how much of that project had been covered by TID before this additional sixty five thousand. Let's see. <clears throat> Let me pull up that. I want to say it's one, one point six million, one point seven million, was covered by the TID. Thank you, Tim. Bill, anything else? Yeah. Anyone done? All right. See, then we'll call the vote. All in favor of amending uh, our resolution R 18324 amending TID 13 budget, signing road, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. To be overly conservative, I'm abstaining. Okay, thank you, Kim. Okay. Uh, no, note, note that Kim abstained. Appreciate it, Kim. Um, next, we have resolution 7 Delta, uh, R 18524. Uh, Approving agreement for subdivision improvements in the No Oaks Ranch LLC certified survey map. We have a motion to approve. Motion to approve, R18524. Moved by Don. Do we have a second? A second. Second by <coughs> Kim. Uh, this is, uh, those of you that uh, I would just add, I used to go to rodeos at the No Oaks Ranch <laughs> many, many years ago. Just a or No, no, just a <laughs> <laughs> I was a spectator. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah. Pretty good assessment, Bill. You know me pretty well. Um, Tim, anything special about this this one? Uh, so with this one, the City of Fitchburg Common Council on October 8th, 2024, conditionally approved the No Oaks Ranch LLC CSM. Uh, land division ordinance requires the execution of a contract for public improvements prior to the signature of the CSM by the city clerk. So we're looking for approval of the agreement for the subdivision improvements in No Oaks Ranch LLC CSM subject to the final review by the city attorney and city engineer. Specifically with this one, there's the um, Madison Metropolitan Sewage District charges. Uh, the nine bark sewer charge and the the assessments uh, for the road sidewalk and roadway that have been incorporated into the uh, subdivision improvement agreement so those the road sidewalk and lighting have been uh, were constructed back in 2020 2021 so the agreement is um, spelling out the assessments for those those improvements Questions? Is what's this area zoned as? It's going to be, um, I think, a hundred and ten unit multifamily housing development that goes up there. Yeah. 
Yeah, as far as the zoning, I'm not sh quite sure. I think it's, believe it's out of the smart oh, code. It's close. Can you get back to us on that? Yes. Let me send a note to the board on that. I'm, I'm curious also. Okay. Any, any other questions? And then we'll uh, call the vote uh, on favor of um, Resolution R-185-24, approving agreements with the, for No Oaks Ranch LLC certified survey map signified by saying aye. 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 All right. Uh, being uh, 6, six o'clock here, I believe. Are we at 6? We're, we're almost there, but I'll just point out um, on page 9 of 18, under the parkland dedication, it does say... The map proposes construction of 110 multifamily unit, uh, 110 multifamily dwelling units on 2.5 acres, zone T5 and smart code. Oh, so it is. It is the T5 okay? Hmm. Thank you, Bill. Um, let's see what do we got here yet. Uh, uh, we have one more. We're going to postpone and then we'll jump into it. So. Um, Next, we have Resolution R-181-24, approving agreement for subdivision improvements in plat of Janestown Quarry. I would like a motion to postpone this until our next meeting. The owner of the area has to approve the, uh, approve the sub, subdivision agreement, Tim. Is that what we're looking for, Shea, to approve? Correct. Okay. So I, for a motion to postpone this uh, resolution. I'll move to postpone resolution number R-181-24. Until uh, we believe Til our next, next, meeting. next meeting in November. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second. Uh, second by Don. Discussion. In favor of postponement, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. We are postponed. Now I would like to move back up to uh, um, um, Agenda 6A uh, for our public hearing, for a preliminary assessment hearing for the uh, 2024 sidewalk, sidewalk project. So... Um, um, we have a number of the public. I assume they have. Uh, you have questions about your your assessments. Can you can you uh, you have that form in back? Could you fill out just so we have your a record? It's right in the back of the room. I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mention it to you earlier. Take your time. And you can take it, and you can come and speak, and then fill it out and give it to us, just to tell us who you are. I want to hold you up. <clears throat> Same in my house. <laughs> you guys can just come up and, uh, if you want to just come up and speak, and then you can give us the form when you're done. Just let us know who you are. Right, right there, yep, come right up there. We just ask you uh, uh, state your name and address for us for our record here. Uh, Donald Julie, five six seven eight Cheryl Drive. What, what was your last name, Julie? J U L I E. Okay, that's your last name. Yes. Thank you. And it was Thank what you. 26? I, I missed the address. I'm sorry. What was your address again? I'm sorry. 5678 Cheryl Drive. Okay. Thank you. Let's go ahead. You have the floor. Okay. Uh, question I don't quite understand. Uh, we have two assessments, and it uh, describes them as uh, 5700. Pembroke opposite side in both instances and it says single sidewalk a pair with 5678 Cheryl and in two different items one for 110 63 and one for 92 19 uh, we have one sidewalk 
I don't understand how the uh, assessment is figured. Give us a minute to, uh, to get to yours here. Yeah, so the sidewalk is on your side of the street. Yes. And the cost is split between the city and the property owner. And then the right. case where there's a sidewalk on one side but not the other, it's split evenly between both side, the, the private parties on both sides of the street. Uh, the private party on the other side has only one assessment, and we have two. Well, there will be one assessment for each slab that's being replaced. And are they, so you're saying that one of, the, uh, one of these is yours alone and the other one is shared between you and the property owner on the other side of the street? Thank you, Kim. I guess I don't understand. Um, as one square would be on one side or the other, as I understand it, or both, but we would not share a square there on the other side Thank of the you. street. Right, so if, if there was sidewalk on both sides of the street, then you would pay 50% if it's on your side. But since there's no sidewalk on the other street, you would pay 25%, and your neighbor across the street would pay the other 25%. So I guess the question is, with the two assessments, why... Why does it seem like they're done differently? Uh, yes, I, I guess I still don't understand. We're being charged 25% uh, and 25% two different item uh, itemized locations. Yeah, because there's two slabs. Okay. On our side. Let them explain. Correct. The sidewalk is on. Yeah, so this is a goofy road because it's Cheryl slash Pembroke, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but the sidewalk is on the north side of that one street. It's, it's one street. It's got two names. Um, so, like, right at the intersection with Richardson, I, I thought was where it changed to Pembroke. But um, uh, regardless, it, it looks like there are two slabs that need to be replaced, and the cost is being split 25% for the Julies and 25% for the Larsons. Okay. Um Larson has only one uh, twenty-five percent itemization. We have uh, two. No, they have two. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's two lines that say pair with five six seven eight Cheryl, and if you scroll all the way to the left, they're both for Chris yes, and I Larson. Yes, I see that. Uh, Chris Larson is right above us, and I only see one item one. Item line for them. There's one above you, and then there's one between your two. On our sheet. Oh, anyway. I see. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I know you can read that. You have much better eyes than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I in. made mine go to 150 <laughs> percent. So there's one above you, and then there's one between your two. And this is for two slabs <clears throat> that. <clears throat> that were put in. Is that correct? They're going to be put in if yeah. it gets approved. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. Okay. Does that okay. Answer, your, answer your question? I, I'm I, sorry I it's think a little that confusing, but uh, <laughs> okay. I think we're consistent with, with you and your and neighbor. Do you want me to fill this out? I, I would like you, if you want mine, just so we have it for the, okay. for the record. You All can right. take your time. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I hope all of your questions are this easy. Yeah, <laughs> so do we. <laughs> Usually doesn't happen, but thank you. Appreciate your, appreciate your good wishes. <laughs> yeah. Sir? Yeah. Jeffrey Robinson, 2903 Humes Lane. 
couldn't hear me. <laughs> we can we can so, hear you fine, but but the the TV camera wouldn't. So I up. live in uh, Uptown Crossing. I've been there six years. Why am I paying for a sidewalk to be replaced after six years? What's the life of concrete? Six years. Now, five years ago, somebody came through and sprayed some X's on some of them, but not mine with cracks in them. And now you're coming through and telling me, oh, I have to replace this after six years? Why? Why am I doing why am I paying for this? It was probably the developer's machinery running on the sidewalks that cracked them to begin with. Why weren't they X'd five years ago when they had the same cracks? What was your address again? Uh, 2903 Humes Lane, H U M E S. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty much anybody in Uptown Crossing has only been there six years, seven tops maybe. Just give us a second here, Jeffrey. Take your time. What do I do with this piece of paper? You just leave it. I can, we'll, we'll, I can we'll take it when we're done. Hey, thanks. There it is. Okay. So you're saying that five years ago, the, the cracks were there right at, at the very beginning? Yes. The same cracks that are there now? Correct. So to say the developer probably had a year warranty, so the ones they picked out at that point, they probably went back and had to fix. I don't know if they think the cracks are bigger now or the So did, did you rely on the developer? to do it or did you send an, one of your engineers out there to review them also? Five years ago or now? Five years ago. I, 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 can't, I can't tell you what they did five years yeah, ago. Yeah, the city's process is to have a city inspector inspect it and prior to accepting those subdivision improvements, um, you know, we would have any repairs made at that time. So I, I can check with staff that you know, we, we do have someone that was here at the time six years ago to, to kind of see the history and make sure that all the the X's that were marked got repaired and if anything got missed. Um, you know, it's hard to go back on a developer now to have them repair something because the, the warranty is up. Um, but I, I do believe we, we have a couple projects with this developer still um, in the city and you know, we, we can broach that with them to see if that's something that they they would honor even though it's past warranty Can't guarantee that though um, But we, we could at least have that conversation <laughs> See I, I think in order to approve their projects you probably could guarantee it Well not <laughs> no you, you can't make them go back and, and repair something that's that the city's accepted though so it's, you know five years ago that the city accepted the improvements do you guys sub it out sub what out the replacement the, the, of the, the construction of it and the inspection the the to the, come in and do the repair at this point in time yes we hire the city out? city hires a contractor to okay. to do the repair because i'm thinking viridian would probably do it cheaper and i think to have them do it would make more sense. To well, that's that's can be part of the conversation. I'm not so. sure why it was missed. Why they? There's quite a few projects on or pro listings on that street. You're not 
the only one. Oh, no. They're, they're so, everywhere. And, I mean, I'm sure they were all built about the same time. So Pretty it's much. Not... Within a two- to three-year span, mm -hmm. for sure. He's on the... H U M E S. It's out in Uptown Crossing, which was, you know, most of those homes were, were brought online in like 2018, 2019 sort of time frame. Were those, were the cracks in the sidewalk the day you moved in? Yeah. How, how long ago did you move in? I moved in in June of 2018. Okay. So it would have been unusual so that it, the city wouldn't have. I mean, that should have been under, under warranty at that time, but, I would but think. But unless the cracks have changed. I mean, if there yeah. was just a a hairline crack, you know, maybe, but maybe now the vertical has changed or something else. I don't know. I, I haven't been out there to look at it, obviously, but you would think if they picked some of them out five years ago, they would have picked everything with a crack. I was surprised they didn't X mine. I mean, and I don't believe they've changed that much. At least okay. one of them hasn't at all. I was kind of wondering back then, you know, maybe Don't I should you buy wish a can you of paint. Said something then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, saying, but again, uh, it's go six, ahead. it's only six years, right? No, yeah, that, I I agree with that. It's you know, concrete definitely should last longer, and we can have that conversation with with the developer, Jeff. We I can call you and let you know, or, or have Zach to follow up with you, kind of on how those conversations go um, regarding that but yeah it's we did notice that area had a lot more cracks than should be given the the age and when it was constructed and there's just foot traffic now before there was skidsters for landscaping running across it absolutely yeah t typically what we tend to see and that's why we mark the X's is you know the developer goes in puts in this infrastructure the the sidewalks and then we we go in inspect it approve it once we accept it they can get their building permits well then the builders are going over with their skid steers and cracking the sidewalks and that's when we go in mark the X and before they get their occupancy they're supposed to the builder's supposed to replace the sidewalk so it looks like something <clears throat> transpired back five six years ago that it's it somehow got missed and that building permit got issued when the sidewalk wasn't repaired so we we, we can look into it and, and see if there's any anything we, we can do um, I can follow up with you after having those conversations yeah, I'd like to have a look. You know, they are doing plenty of projects in the city. You know, it appears that most of them on there are this West Central Park Place apartments. There's only about two, maybe three individual people that are not the apartment owners that are being assessed that I've seen from looking at this. The majority of it is the apartments. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up something else, which is... Totally. So Viridian, as a developer, they have to contribute HOA fees for unsold lots. So there were 60 lots in there. So as an owner comes on, they start paying HOA fees. And any unsold lot, Viridian covers that. Silveridian so kept the HOA fees low until they left. Yeah. And how they did this was um, the majority of our HOA fees is, I don't know if you're familiar with our subdivision, but they're backloaded garages, so we have two alleys. Yeah. That's our big maintenance. Yeah. Otherwise, insurance, trash. So they kept... They kept the, um, what do I want to say, the, the depreciation for the asphalt out of their computation until they left. And I think it should have started when the project started. So that was a few thousand dollars, which isn't a lot, but it's a lot to the HOA. So maybe you just, I'm just trying to make you aware of. Yeah. Oh that's kind of wonky that they do that because all of a sudden you're looking at why did the HOA fees go up so much 
Well, that's because they weren't including the asphalt, which is the big maintenance that we have to uh, contribute for. Yeah. I, I, I was unaware of this issue, Jeffrey. That was the first that's been brought to my attention. You know, I'm not not that intimately aware of, you know, <laughs> aware of how these how those things work, but it's something that certainly you know, they they come before our board for many projects. You know, this is something I will. I will. Uh, I can't go back and do anything about it. No, 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 I, no. I, I I'm, I'm yeah, making you aware of it I'm, for. I, th I think we will question them next time they're here on it. Uh, I'm making you aware of it for future no. projects, and then, then they bring a management company in, that we pay the HOA fees to. They handle it. Well, they don't tell you that they own the management company. So they're charging us, say, four thousand dollars a year. And they go, well, you're getting a deal because we normally charge six. And I go, well, no, because we should only be paying one. So who's right? So anyway, they kind of sneak things through. They snuck the, the HOA fee for the asphalt through. They sneak their own company, management company. They didn't bid out the management company fees. But Otherwise. doesn't the a current HOA board have the opportunity yeah. to get quotes and proposal, proposals yeah. from new management companies if you wanted to change? We did change. Okay. Because we found somebody less expensive. Okay. But they're in, the in transition, there, yeah. They're in there for two to three years or four years, whatever. So as soon as yeah. we took over after X amount are sold or whatever, or maybe yeah. everything sold then we have to appoint a board right and then and we then take you can over do your own negotiating and yeah. and that's when we did get a different management company management company out of waukesha that charges less so yeah and thank you for making me aware of that i, I wasn't I, i'm kind of ignorant of of those things so thank you well they don't they don't announce it yeah <laughs> they're in the business to make money <laughs> so thank you thank you those are my two, two little sidetracks okay. on Viridian. So you're going to get back to me. You are. I'm Tim Volker, the director of public works, city engineer. Either myself or Zach Laundry. Zach's the uh, project engineer for the project. Either one of us will will get back to you. Give us a, a little time uh, to kind of reach out to Viridian. A couple days. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll, <laughs> no. we'll reach out to him uh, this week, and then uh, I don't know if I'll get a response right away. That's. But we'll we'll give you an update on kind of when we called them and if we were able to get a hold of them and kind of where the discussion went. Yeah, certainly for them to contribute something, if yeah. not everything, would be nice. Absolutely. We, we agree that six years is inadequate yeah. for sidewalk. Okay. I can't think of anything else. <laughs> Did I Thank give you enough? <laughs> Thank you for coming Thank in. Thank you. We really appreciate it, Jeffrey. Thanks for your help. Thanks for taking your time to come before this board. One sec here. I gotta zoom back out. Come on, zoom. I'm zoomed way in too far to read. <laughs> Tim, how how do we decide which slabs to replace? How are you know? Are we looking at different sections of the city each year? I'm just wondering how how did we have so many on in this neighborhood this year and not in a previous year? So the city is. Uh, broken up into I six or seven sections. Uh, there's a, ma a map, and we we kind of focus on one of those areas in, in a year. However, throughout the year, we're getting calls on, on tripping hazard. So mm -hmm. if it is in a you know a tripping hazard it is something we want to repair right away. Obviously, if we just did the sidewalk project, and a week later. Uh, we got a call about a tripping repair. Mark will kind of go out and maybe put some asphalt there just to temporarily do it. Um, but that, that area may be outside of next year's section, but we'll still include it because we, we want to get it done and we're aware of it. So that's kind of why you'll, you'll see one area of the city predominantly in for the project. However, there's these sporadic areas out there is because we, we got calls throughout the year or we noticed it when going out um, to do a site visit or something else on another project. So this is, I mean, given the newness of this area, this is probably the first year we've we've gone out and specifically looked for this. Correct. 
yeah, it's disappointing. You know, they, that's certainly, you know, they, like he, I think he, he's, he's correct in his assertion that they, the builders, the builders caused it or the landscapers caused the problem. I'm just sort of surprised if the cracks were there five years ago when they did the other ones, they didn't catch them all. That, that seems I, unusual. Yeah, yeah, I do too. All right. Well, that I'm going to close the the public hearing uh, on the uh, sidewalk assessment. Bring us back to our agenda. Uh, our next is uh, seven Alpha Resolution R one hundred sixty three twenty four authorizing acceptance of twenty twenty four sidewalk and related concrete bid. Uh, do you have a motion to approve? I'll move to approve. Moved by Kim. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Alder Jatzer. Uh, discussion. Um, I, I'm a little bit on our path forward here. Um, I, um, I guess we're, well, I, I believe we can approve it as is, and then if we get, uh, I'm hoping that we get some accommodation from Viridian that we can we can adjust it. Sorry, can adjust it down without another another meeting. Would I be correct? I, yeah, if we were to remove it uh, from the contract, we, we wouldn't have to come back uh, for for another amend, amendment yeah. to it. Okay, all right. Because it's a, a reduction, not an in, increase. Okay. So if they if they would fix them, then the people on that, some on the, on the list would not. Uh, would we get a penalty from our contractor if he didn't have to? He bid on a certain number of square feet. Uh, uh, the con or the contract's written such that the the city has the right to to remove or okay. a add. Good man, I like that. <laughs> really? Once Up to a certain percent. Okay, thank you. You're more, you get, you're more familiar that, with that than I am. Okay. All right. Any any other questions? Uh, may we ask just that? Uh, we I do. We, uh, just go ahead. Quick one on the the contract that we're letting. Are they replacing it just based on the trip hazards? Or because if it's excessively cracked but it's not heaved up or it's not causing a tripping hazard, yeah, the, would so they replace it? The city has multiple criteria for replacing sidewalk, one being trip hazards, cracking's a, another upheaval from tree roots. Uh, we do have uh, that in, included in the project. So the, it, it's more than just... Just a, a tripping hazard. Cracking is also one, one of the criteria we look at. Anything else? No. Yeah, I noticed there's 90 detectable warning fields being replaced. That seems like a lot. Um, is Do those get replaced only when the ramp is replaced, or do we replace those more often? It's predominantly when the, the ramp gets replaced. Um, rarely we'll, we'll go in and just replace the detectable warning, but it, if we're replacing the ramp, we'll, we'll make sure it meets the a ADA requirements while we're replacing the ramp. Okay. Um, I'll just note that uh, older ramps tend to have that extra concavity at the bottom, so if you're pushing a stroller or riding a bike, there's an awful jolt there every time. And, and some of the newer ones I've seen are, are much improved, very smooth. Talking a dip from the curb or from the gutter at the bottom? The gutter the pan typically yeah, has that yeah. little concavity there. And I think as well the, uh, the drainage tends to be better on the newer ones. Thank you. I was unaware of that. Any any other questions? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All in favor of Resolution R-163-24, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. This will go to council tomorrow night. Um, we have one more next. We have Resolution 7, Foxtrot, R-187-24, granting an underground electric easement, now lot one of certified survey map 15059, North Fish Hatchery Road Hub. We have a motion to approve. I so move we approve resolution R-187-24. Moved by Dave Wilborn. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Bill. We discussed this at uh, last Board of Public Works and at Parks, uh, approving the, 
the estimate by MG&E for putting in the, uh, the underground uh, service for the construction and eventually the permanent service. And we saw on the map the 10-foot wide easement that they, uh, that they needed. Uh, so um, I think that's all this, all this is, is, is an electric easement. It's not a gas easement or water. It's just MG&E's electric easement for their cables. <coughs> Am I am I somewhere in the ballpark, Tim? Correct. Okay. So why why did we not vote on it the last time? Uh, it, I don't think they had uh, requested it. So the MG and E prepares the easement, and the easement document wasn't oh, ready for okay. it to yeah. to approve at the same time we we did the amendment for the the budget amendment oh, for okay. it. So Just we had to wait okay. till they completed that. I remember you saying, it all sounds so familiar. I remember we <laughs> talked about it the last time, and it's like, but it was the budget amendment that we were approving That's the last correct. time. Now we're approving the easement. Thank you for that clarification, Tim. Any, anything else? I'll call the vote. All in favor of resolution R-187-24, <coughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the motion carries. Our next Board of Public Works is November, let me, let me should be November 4th. Uh, so if anyone can't make it, let no, them know. I got one question for okay, Bill before we call it. Go ahead. For some reason or other, I've been noticing it because it's just down from my lot, but did you shut off the speed limit? For the vehicles coming over the hill because it hasn't worked in months. I can have I can check with the police department uh, on that. Uh, s some of the speed signs they they control. So I I think the Cheryl one is, is under their watch. I'll, I'll I can check with them tomorrow. On okay, that. because it, it isn't working. Sure. You're noticing Thank the you. you're noticing the increased speed too. I'm taking oh, yeah. it. <laughs> they Thank they you. work. You're actually trying to get out of my driveway. <laughs> Thank you. Didn't mean to cut you off. Okay. Uh, next, November 4th, 530. Uh, this time I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Moved by Don. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Alder Jetzer. All in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>